Hi everybody, this is the second session of Mr. Liss's homework help for Algebra 2. We're working on sections 1.2 and 1.3, numbers 5, 27, 39, and 74. Lucky for you, I felt, I felt pretty good, so we're going to do four problems today. I've already worked this one out earlier, so I'm going to start back fresh. All right, so the problem asks, number five, evaluate each expression for the given values of the variables. What it's asking is first, we need to plug in what these variables are over here. So y equals negative two and x equals three. So every time we see a x, we plug in three, and every time we see a y, we plug in a negative two. So I'm gonna rewrite this down here, just plugging in those numbers for y, so 3y, y equals negative 2, so minus the quantity 4 times y, which is negative 2, plus 6 times x, which is 3. Now, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, parentheses, multiplication, uh, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction states, first we need to do the parentheses. This is a parenthesis over here, but it's not a quantity. This is actually a multiplication. What we're looking for when we look at parentheses is a quantity, when there's more than one term inside of a parenthesis. So we're going to work at this, look at this one over here first. So it's 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, plus 6 times 3, which is 18. I'm going to bring everything else down. Okay, there's still two terms in here uh, inside this parenthesis, so we're going to work with that one again. Negative 8 plus 18 is positive 10. I'm going to bring everything else down. There's only one, t one more, there's only one term inside this parenthesis up here, so we don't need to put the parenthesis anymore. All right, next in line is multiplication. So we have 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6, minus 10. All right, now we have negative 6 minus 10, which is negative 16, which is our answer. All right, that's number 5 for you. Next, we're going to move on to number 27. Number 27 isn't really that hard, but it can be kind of confusing if, you're, uh, if you aren't exactly on top of what we're talking about here. So number 27 is x squared. What does number 27 ask us to do? Simplify by combining like terms. So just combine the like terms. x squared plus x squared plus x. Now we're going to be combining the like terms by addition. So we'll be looking for all the like terms. So x squared and x squared and x. The two like terms here are x squared and x squared. So two x squareds means 2x squared. Now there's only one x term, so we're just going to bring that one down. There's only one x. And that's actually our answer. So when we're looking for like terms, we're not uh, looking at the, well, I mean, we're looking at the exponents, but we're not going to change them at all. So it's not going to be x to the fourth, it's just going to be x squared. So there's 2x squared in this one, and just 1x, so we have 2x squared plus 1x. Mr. Crosser, please call extension 47742. Mr. Crosser. Ignore that, please. That was really rude. Number 39 is the next one in line, which is on the next page. Okay, number 39, we're working with absolute values here. 2z plus 3 plus 5 absolute value four, five, minus 3z where z equals negative 3. Similar to what we were doing before but now we're just now we just have x uh, absolute values. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in z for everything we see up here that has a, where, where we see a z. So 2, a 
the absolute value of 2 times z, which is negative 3, plus 3, plus the absolute value of 5 minus 3 times z, which is negative 3. All right. So we're going to look inside each one of these absolute values. And we have 2 times negative 3. Multiplication goes first, so we have 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, plus 3. Over here, multiplication goes first, so we must do that. So we have 5 minus negative 9. All right. 6, negative 6 plus 3, which equals negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 plus 5 minus a negative 9. We have neg minus a negative. We can change that to 5 plus a positive 9. 5 plus a positive 9 is 14. So we have the absolute value of minus or negative 3 plus the absolute value of 14. The absolute value of minus 3 is just 3. When you're looking at absolute values, it's always the positive of what number is that's inside. 3 plus the absolute value of 14, which is 14. So our answer is 17. All right, that's number 39. Now we're going to be looking at 74. Put these numbers in order. Number 74. So negative 1.5, negative 0 0.5, yeah. negative square root of 2. And negative 1.4. Okay. All it's saying is just put those numbers in order. Well, I don't have a calculator with me right now, but let's go ahead and, and you can find out what the square root of 2 is. I'm pretty sure it's negative 1.4 or something. So let's see. So if this is 0 negative 0.5, so that's less than 1, so this is negative 1, negative 0.5 would be right here, so negative 0.5, 0 0.5, same thing, and then we have negative, if square root of 2 is negative 1.4 something something, uh, negative 1.4 would be next in line, then negative square root of 2, and then negative 1.5. As the numbers go larger in the opposite in the negative direction, and that means they actually become smaller. So seeing as all these numbers are negative, the larger they are, the smaller they are. So one point negative 1.5 is actually the smallest, and negative 0.5 is the largest. That's all you have to do for number 7, E4. Alright, and that actually concludes our homework help session for this section. So uh, I hope this helped out. If I'm pretty sure this is correct, so um, I don't actually have a calculator with me right now, but you can double check on what square root of 2 is, but I'm pretty sure it falls right in here. But you know, you're smart enough, you can figure that one out on your own. Alright, so, uh, yeah, hope this helped. All right, see you next time.